نكمل محاضراتنا لليوم مع الدكتور أندريا باليرمو Professor of College of Medicine and, F and Industry, Birmingham, Professor at University of Bari, Italy, to give us lecture entitled Emated Loading from Single Tooth to Full Arch. Assalamu alaikum. I, I hope uh, uh, you had a good night yesterday after the, the information I gave you. I, I suppose some of them were. Uh, maybe a lot, so we will go back today on, uh, on more information and also what we talked about yesterday and if you have any question feel free to stop me and to ask me uh, whatever, whatever you want. So what, what we have seen yesterday is uh, um, some biological concept related to implantology. And as I told you yesterday, biology is very, very important because it gives us the opportunity to think in a biologic way. That's very important because biology is always, always the same. And what I tried to underline yesterday is the importance of the, of, mm, to know the healing mechanism. So what I told you yesterday for healing, we need blood, that means we, we have a trauma, we need fibrin that creates a, a networks where growth factor and cells can, can stay there, differentiate and migrate. And then there is a, a toxic fa phase of the healing of the implant. And during this phase, the primary stability goes down. And after this, there is the secondary stability. There is the host integration that is a highly complex process related mainly to the, to the growth factor, to stem cells, and to BMP. And the last thing that is also very, very important is load. Because as I told you yesterday, without load, we don't have healing. For the right healing of the bone, we really need load to obtain a trabecular bone. That's extremely important. Yesterday, I saw you show you a lot of single tooth immediate loading cases, and I told you the single tooth maybe is the most difficult case, is a harder case in comparison with multiple implant immediate loading. And today we will continue talking about this and we will increase the number of the implant. And then I want also to give you some other biological and mechanical concept, because the, my idea is to give you information so you have the opportunity to, to choose the best implant system for, for your life and for, and for your uh, profession. As I told you yesterday, the, the implant in very young patient, like in a genesis of lateral, is, very, is quite common and my success rate is 100%. The reason is that the biological response in a very young boy or in a very young lady is very, very good. And I, yesterday I told you, we have to take care about the age. That means uh, the power of biological response and the prospective life of the patient. So here is uh, the, the case. Here the, the CT scan to, to have the opportunity to study everything. And here, what I'm doing, I'm opening the flap. And as I told you yesterday, the therapy change if we are dealing, for example, with a young woman like here, 19 years old, or we are talking with a very old woman. Because we, with a very old woman here, I don't open the flap. I go through the gum. Very easy surgery, no bleeding, no complication. Why? Because I want to do something very gentle and because I know that the prospect of life of that patient is not so long. On the other hand, here is a young girl. I know the healing will be very fast and very good. And the prospect of life is very, very long. So I want to put the implant in the, in the very precise position to ensure a very, very long bridge work for, for this girl. So I gently open the flap. I avoid to do the release in the incision on the central incisor, I just do on the, on the canine area. 
This is my head. And, and then I go on with the surgery. We will see only one side because the other one is just, just the same. So we go with a drill with a very good irrigation, with a, a saline solution, of course, and I su suggest you to have a cold saline solution. Don't take it from, from uh, uh, take, put it in the, in the fridge. Usually we don't have a lot of space in the area, so we have to be very, very gentle and very precise. And I, in this case, I, I will do a hundred preparation because my idea is to do immediate loading here. So after the first drill, I go and, and screw the implant in, and I love to do this with my hand, with a, a screwdriver or with a racket. I don't like to do it with a micro motor because even if the micro motor is very, very low, it's still quite, quite fast. So you can overeating the bone, inserting the implant. And on the other hand, if you do it by hand, you have a very good, a full control of the position and a full control of the insertion torque. So this is a Starfly implant and a 3.5 is in the bone. And I will do the same thing on, on the other side. So here is the temporary abutment. And here is the implant in. And the ideal position should be something like that. So I should have at least 1.5, but one also is enough millimeter for the adjacent teeth. And I should go maybe deeper, two millimeter or three in relation to the, to the junction. But we will discuss about this because this is a very important point because it's not always like that. This is strictly related to the implant connection. So this concept can be good or not. It depends from the connection. So here is the final restoration of, of the patient. So as I tell you yesterday, when you place the implant in the bone, the only thing that keeps the implant in place is primary stability. That's it. After a long period, you will have the secondary stability. That means also integration. But at the start, primary stability is the only force. Implant stability, in general, is done by primary plus also integration. But during all the first period, to have an implant that gives you a very high primary stability is fundamental. If you do immediate loading, but also if you do delay the loading, you need stability. And which are the, the things that change the stability? The bone quality, of course, the macro and the micro structure of the implant, the dimension of the implant, the implant site preparation, and also the linkage of the implants. If you have different implants and you link it together, this will change, of course, the stability. So going fast with the bone, a very good uh, um, way to, to, to do a classification is the one from Lerbkow and Zarb, so from D1 to D4. And, and we know that usually the D1 bone is in the area of the chin. In the, uh, then we do have D3, D2 or D3 in, in the area of the mandible, in the upper, and D4 in, uh, in the posterior maxilla. And uh, for a long time, at the time of Brandemark, this area was considered very, very good for placing implant because it gave a very high primary stability. But this is not correct because the reality there is that the primary stability is very, very high. But the problem is that there is a very few blood and very few cells. So as we are not carpenter, we can feel a very good primary stability, but the healing process would be very difficult in that area. So we can have dense bone or sponge bone, and of course this makes a difference. I, we have to focus our attention about the microstructure of the implant, because this is very important to give a primary stability. 
You, you can see there the X-ray. I did a publication comparing different implant system with the primary stability to understand which could be the better. And the characteristic of the implant have to be like that. So sharp trade, apical blade, a straight apical border, cutting taper. Which are the advantage for this? The self-drilling, that is very, very important. Self-taping, easy insertion. Why that is so important? Because it helps you to, to do an easy surgery, to put in the right position. And even if your preparation is not so perfect, if you do have an active implant, you can correct. How you can see here. Another very important point for your implant system is the variable thread design. If you have different trade design on the implant, this will increase a lot your stability. Why? What you have to think, if you start to put the implant and the first thread are the red one, they go in the bone. Then you go deeper and arrive the green one. And that thread still found bone, new bone. Then the yellow one had other new bone. So this gives you a very, very high primary stability. On the other hand, if you use implant where the thread design is always the same, you go deeper and the new thread will go in the same space of the other. So this changes a lot, the primary stability at the bone to impact contact. So think, for example, the implant on the, on the right, always the same thread, different year, different trade, or there, or there. It changed a lot the primary stability. And once again, primary stability is a key point if you want to have success. The other point is also related to the microstructure of the implant that is important for the healing mechanism, but also for the primary stability. Because rough surface increase to the primary stability and increase also the secondary one because help you to, to healing in a, better, in a better way. Nowadays, the implant surface anyway are all quite similar. I mean, uh, we are talking about sandblasting to create a microsurface from 20 to 40 microns and a double thermal edging process. That's the gold standard in the market at the moment. And many companies will come in your office and will tell you, doctor, I have the best and new surface. It's, no, it's not real. They are almost the same, but tomorrow, I will show you something very, very interesting. Because I'm working now since four, uh, four years uh, with a, a European project that is uh, called the Horizon 2020. And we developed a very new, very interesting surface that is a biological surface. It's an implant surface plus the growth factor of the patient. So it's a specific individual biological surface. And what is amazing that on this surface we are able to apply the fibrin, the stem cells, the growth factor, and the BMP of the patient. But we will discuss about this tomorrow. It will be a, a surprise for, for tomorrow, but it's something very, very powerful and very innovative. Of course, how we can change implant stability? We can change it, we can change the bone, the kind of bone, of course. But we, we can change the site preparation. So if we do have poor density, we can, can do a under preparation of our bone. In any area of the mouth, not in the area of the chin. Don't do it in the area of the chin. There can be a problem because as I told you, there is no veils, there is no cells, so very hard healing. If you put an implant under compression in the area, it's very bad, it's not a good idea. Another option, and a good option, to treat this area of the chin that, as I told you, is a very, very bad area, what I suggest, or to use growth factor, or the surface that I will show you tomorrow, or another option can be to use the piezo. The, the utility of using the piezo is that the piezo is the only machine 
that I can cut the bone and I can preserve the vitality of the bone. And we know this from, from histology. I will show you later. I'm sorry I jumped the, the movie. No. Give me a second to fix. Okay, so I'm preparing here the bone, not with a drill, but with a piezo. Because with a piezo, we know from histology, I did a publication in this direction, very interesting, that when we cut the bone with a piezo, we have the host live osteocytes on the cutting surface. That means live cells on bone. That means less necrotic material, and that means that much more easier for the fibrin to have a linkage and to start the healing process. That's why in that area, in post-extractive case, can be very, very useful to, to use uh, um, the, the piezo, the growth factor. And another thing that can be very useful there is to use one-piece implant. That means the implant with the, with the abutment itself. Why? Because this is strictly related to the connection. And in a few minutes, I will talk to you about connection, and it's an extremely important, extremely important point. We can skip a little bit, maybe. So here is the, the power implant that is part of uh, HIMEL. It's a one-piece implant. That means that uh, the, the implant and the abutment are all one piece, are integrated abutment and you screw in. The problem here can be to put in the right parallelism, but if you use the piezo, it will be very easy to find the right, the right position. So I screw the first one in, and then we will do the same job, exactly the same job on, on the other side. And with the piezo, look, you have very few bleeding for cavitational effect of piezoelectric device. And you have also the contamination of the site. And also is a cheaper therapy. So we go and do exactly the same. We take our racket and, and we, screw, we screw it in. That's it. So here is, is the patient, here is the implant. Here is the, the temporary. So the idea with the piezo is, is quite easy. So let's go now to a very important point. That is the connection. Because when you choose your implant system, I, I don't care what, what you like. I mean, I, I'm not here to support any kind of, of, uh, of implant. I just want to give you some concept and, and let you free to choose what can be better for you. So when you have to choose a implant, the first thing you have to take a look is the primary stability. You really need a implant that gives you a very high primary stability. Even if you won't do all your life delayed loading, you need primary stability. The second thing you really have to take care of is connection. Abutment with implant connection. That's very, very important. You see in my presentation today and yesterday, you see, I use two-piece implant, but sometimes I use also one-piece implant. Which are the difference? And, and this helps us to think about connection. I will tell you. There is a very old publication, it was uh, 2001, and it was de demonstrated a lower crystal resorption around one-piece implant versus two-piece implant. So if you put one piece implant, you lose less bone than two piece. And of course, Branemark get crazy for, for this. Which is the, bio, the biology of that area? Easy. What we know from biology, what we know from experience, what we know from Branemark studies, from Branemark school, is that at the second stage, when we put the abutment, or we put the healing cap, or what else, Often, we open the flap and the implant is perfect. It's at the level of the bone, sometimes under. We put the connection and then we lose bone. About 1.5 to 2 millimeter of bone 
goes down all around the, the implant. And for Brandemark, this was normal. He said, no, it's because of the load and the, and the bone goes down to the first thread. Is this true? No. So we place the implant, everything okay. We put a connection and, and, and the bone goes down. And this is called the biological aid around the, the implant. So we do have a soft tissue development and everything. And this is, for a long, long time, it was the only reality. But after a little bit, something started to change. Because up, we find in the market the, the so, this kind of implant. So the implant were the so-called transgingival implant. So we have a neck, and we leave the neck, like in Strauman implant, in the gum. And what happened? That, that bone doesn't go down. So it doesn't depend from the load. It's another story. In fact, if I take a standard Brunnerman implant and I don't put at the level of the bone, but I leave it upper, I don't lose two millimeter of bone. Or if I, I take a one piece implant, I don't lose bone. Sometimes I gain bone. So if I use, for example, the power implant for my MHEL, I can keep completely my bone. Like here, or like there. But there is not one piece. So what, what, what is happening there? There is, something, there is something different. Here, this is a universe implant. It's not one piece. It's not one piece. It's two piece. Because this is universe implant, and what we have here with universe implant, and not only, of course, with universe, is something called plateau shifting. And plateau shifting, I will give another strange information, like I, I, I gave you yesterday, a lot of strange information. Pa pla plateau shifting is not real. It doesn't work at all. What I mean? The idea of platinum shifting is I will put a smaller abutment in a bigger implant. So when I put my implant, anyway, as biology is always the same, I will lose 1.5 millimeter, but I will lose a part horizontal and a part vertical. It's not true. I did a very interesting publication, a, a study on men with a good friend of mine, Elio Minetti, from Italy, a colleague. And we try to use different, um, different of this distance. This, this is called the misfit. So the idea was, if we increase the misfit, if we increase the horizontal, the vertical will decrease. It doesn't happen. It's not like that. Why? Because there is another aspect that we have to consider. Platon shifting is not enough. Platon shifting is very good because we, we have the same abutment for all diameter sites. So it's great. When I st you are, a lot of you are young, but when we started to work, any diameter had its own abutment. It was crazy. So platon shifting is very, very good, but it's not enough. Why is not enough? Because there is the so-called pumping effect. When we put the implant under load, you will see better here. Look, it open a little bit and close. I will show you again. It open, close, and squeeze, squeeze bacteria. So even if you put the connection here, and you squeeze, the bacteria are here. And once again, our body is very smart. See bacteria, I go away. So you need platform shifting, but you need also a very stable conical connection. So if you join this two point, you can achieve the best result. You can keep a lot of bone. But if you use only platform shifting, or only 
a good connection is not enough. You have to join these two points. It's very, very important. And these make a difference in all two places you implant. Because if you use a conical connection with platon shifting, you can go also under the level of the bone. It will work. But if you use a standard connection, please leave the implant one millimeter outside of the bone. Don't go deep. Don't go at the bone level. Because if you do this, you lose bone. So that's a very important, that's a very important key point. Another advantage of platform shifting is also that move the micro movement away from the bone. Because another thing that we have to take care, you have to take care when you choose your implant system, is that uh, you put the implant to give a crown to the patient and the patient will bite. And this will transfer the forces from the crown to the abutment, to the implant, to the bone. So in doing this, it's very, it's very important to have, to have a very good implant system. When I start to work with IML, I say to Giovanni Ganino, OK, we should do some, some test, some load test. I say, no problem, I'm, I'm sure about OK. But we won't do in vertical. I want to do with tilted implant. Because if you see, a lot of companies, all the stress tests are with the vertical implant. It's quite easy. But in real life, you will never have a vertical load. You will always have tilted load. And what we did was very interesting, because with a tilted implant, with a load of 50 Newton, we have no stress area. With a load of 150 Newton, is almost cold, and it's a quite big power. And we have to, to reach 250 Newton to have some hot area here. That's the, the possible breaking point. But the interesting thing is that it's not circular. It's just here. So it can resist to the stress. And we need to reach 500 Newton to have something that can be probably a problem, but it won't be because once again it's not circular. So this is very important for two points. One, you don't have broken implant. And I will show you in my presentation a lot of broken implant, and it's a big deal. The second thing is that the power, the forces that, that are related to the bone are better. Because this is a, a mathematic model, this is with a 15 degree abutment, when you bite, you got uh, some forces that go on the bone. And it's very important so, to, to have a very stable system. If we increase the angulation to 25, we also increase the, the, stress, the stress on the bone. In, in fact, I'm not a big lover of all on four technique. If we think about very tilted implant, because it's, I, all I do, I, I do all on four, but if I do have bone, I prefer to put two more implant and to be safer. But we will talk later about this when we talk about full arch. Why is so important the connection? Because if I do have this kind of connection, I can achieve this result. Look here. So this is immediate loading. This is temporary. But look the final crown. Look this papilla. Look this papilla. It's impossible to achieve this result with a standard connection. If you try and do this with a flat-to-flat -flat connection, you will have for sure a black triangle there. For sure. The same surgical, the same surgery. What it changed here is the implant system. Look, he, he arrives almost to the, to the uh, incisal portion. So that's why connection is so important. I don't have here the pumping effect. I don't lose bone. And everything looks very nice. It looks very healthy. And I have no other option here because these girls have diastema, and we want to keep something very similar to this. So that, that's why the implant is so important. 
let's change a little bit uh, topic now. And uh, I will show you only one case, and is related to what I told you yesterday. I told you a very good way to lose implant is to place implant and to put a removable on during healing. Because the 90% of the blood support come from periosteum. So if you press the periosteum with a removal, you got a compression and you, 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 will, you don't have su sufficient bl um, uh, blood support for the implant and you will lose an implant. In fact, nowadays in the lower, not in the upper, I prefer also for a removal to do immediate loading. So, free implant, abutment, the bowl abutment, and immediate loading. And in my experience, it works better than delayed loading in the lower, not in the upper. In the upper, to be honest, I prefer not to do removal. I say to the patient, okay, use a standard one, it will work. Or if the patient really wants to have a smaller palatal wall, I, I always do a bar. I don't use a ball on, on the upper. Another thing that I want to tell you, looking into these images, uh, as there are a lot of students, I, I don't know that for very good doctor here in the first row, it's not useful, but, but for the student it can be very important. Because when I was a student, nobody teach to me this, and I made some mistake. In the lower, in the lower, in the area from the, um, the mental to the mental, I can do whatever I want on bone. I can go deep, I can reach the margin, no problem on bone, but I'd be very, very gentle on soft tissue. I can do any vertical incision in the area between the mental nerve. The only one I can do is in the middle, in between the central incisor. So if you want to do vertical, you have to go back to the mental nerve. If you need to do vertical in the area of the chin, the only one can be in the middle. And what is crazy, you know, I, I, I read some paper, for example, of the, when you take the, the block from the chin, uh, bone block, we will we'll see this tomorrow, and some doctors say the compli one of the complications is to have some numb, some paresthesis because of the bone of the chin. It's not true. You can't take the bone of the chin. You will never have a paresthesis. The problem, if you read the paper, is they do vertical in that area to take, to take the bone. So please remember, in the lower, just in the middle for the vertical or back to the, to the central, to the, um, the foramen. So let's change again topic and let's talk about sinus lift. I put these images because in, uh, in Italian, uh, uh, donkey is uh, asino, so it's very similar to, to sinus lift, to sinus. And once again, crystal sinus lift and immediate loading. I want to tell you something. I, I'm showing yesterday, today, and tomorrow a quite difficult case. The message is, is not go at home tomorrow and do it the same. The message is, if can work in a case like that, and you will arrive to do this kind of case, think how can, can work in an easy case. So here, for example, what I did for this patient was sinus lift and immediate loading. And once again, I used the piezo to do this. Why? Because with the piezo, it's very easy to cut the cortical bone without ruining the membrane. And with the piezo, in the water inside the piezo, I can really have a good elevation of the membrane, a big elevation in a very easy way. I will show the clip. So the clip should be... No, that should be later. So this is the implant, and the implant two months later. This is the starfly implant I use in this case. Look how easy. There is there a very, very small flap. And uh, I'm preparing with a, with a piezo, with a fir the first uh, um, 
insert to reach the cortical bone. And then when I reach the cortical bone, I, I change, I use another one that blow a lot of water, so I check with the X-ray because you don't have sensibility with the piezo. You can feel the, the cortical with the drill, but not with the piezo. So I change, and I, I do the, the final cut and, and the elevation. Then I, I will put some graph material, and then the, the implant, and, and the abutment, and everything, everything you know. And here is the implant five years after load. And what is interesting, if we take a look to, to the uh, panoramic, is that we did a surgery to place only this implant for a mother of money of the patient, but with a very easy surgery, I could put also the second molar, or if you need money, maybe also the wisdom tooth you can put with the implant. So with a very easy approach, a, a lot of bone was gained there. Let's see another case similar to this. This is a colleague, uh, is a dentist, and he want to start the rehabilitation from this side. He didn't want to do uh, um, a full arch, but to do it uh, gently. So I start with extraction. I leave that crown, not because I will leave it at the hand, but to check the occlusion. And what I use, do, usually do in my surgery is to start with what is easier. So which is the easier implant for me? I start from there. Why? Because you do the first implant and you feel better. And you say to the patient, oh, the first one is done. On the other hand, you start with a sinus. You break the membrane and you, sh you start to, to get red and stressed and the patient feel this and all the surgery change completely. So go step by step. That's why I'm starting from the post-extractive, that for me is easily. Then I will put the second one that will be quite easy with a drill. And another trick, when I prepare for the second one, I'm using the insertion tool on the first one. Why? B because if the first one is in the right position, if I put the head of my micromotor in contact with the insertion tool, I will be in the right position. And once again, I go and screw with my uh, screwer in the upper, of course. And then I will do the last two implant with sinus augmentation with the, with the piezo. And at the end, I, I will have a normal length implant. And as I showed you before, it's, it's quite easy. There is very few bleeding also because of the, of the, the cavitational effort of the, of the piezo. And in this case, I use a graft, a uh, tricalcium sulfate graft mixed with a, um, CGF, with concentrated growth factor. I'm sorry I was not able to understand all your lesson about graft because I'm sure it was very, very interesting. And, uh, and I will tell you my position during my presentation about, about graft. So this is tricalcium sulfate mixed with, with PRF, and then the standard lead implant and a screw in. And I will do the, the same, exactly the same thing also for, for the other one. After this, I, I will do also um, a lateral augmentation. So here's the last one. Lateral augmentation, then I will put uh, um, the abutment and I will realign the temporary. And as I told you yesterday, how can you do here a non-functional immediate loading? It's impossible because uh, it's half arch. So of course you will go in contact when the patient go home. That's why we have always to think to the occlusion. Don't make the mistake to leave space and say, okay, I'm safe because I have space. Think to the occlusion. 
After you check all the occlusion, you can also grind everything, but only after thinking and checking the occlusion. This is a, a resolvable membrane. This is Michelangelo, is the name. And here's the, the train and reline and go home. And this is the X ray before the final impression. So we can also increase the number of implants, like here. So we can do some extraction. And, and we can, after extraction, we can place our implant. And as I told you before, look what I do here. I go with a probe all around. Why? Because I won't keep the PDL. And the reasons for which I want to keep the PDL is that in PDL, I do have the BMP. So I don't want to lose the power of BMP. So I try to disconnect as much as possible the PDL. And for the same reasons, I won't go with a spoon to clean everything. Of course, if there is a lesion on the hapex, I will take it out. But try and keep the PDL. As I told you yesterday, if you think you see a CT scan and you see a normal canine that looks out of the bone, why? because the PDL keep a very thin layer of bone. After this, we have to do gentle extraction. And I, I always say to the patient, it, it will take longer for the extraction than for, for implant placement, because it have to be very, very gentle. And after extraction, we go and, and place our implant. As I told you yesterday, if we open the flap, or if we don't open the flap, is a completely different healing partner. This is not a flapless surgery, because I, if I do the extraction, I, I got the velus, there is my flap. But the healing is similar to a flapless surgery, which is the difference that when I cut the gum, I give an information to the gum to produce substances that go and inhibit BMP. So BMP helped me to produce bone, but I cut the gum, I have raised the periosteum, and from here start the release of noggins, chloridins, a lot of substances that try to avoid the bone formation. That's why when it is possible not to open the flap, of course, it's not always possible. But when is this possible with guided surgery or with the alveolus or when the bone is very, very much, it's much more better in terms of feeling not to elevate. I know maybe you feel less surgical, but do it because the healing will be completely different. Another thing that I told you yesterday, we never take care in oral surgery about the timing of a surgery. That's a big mistake. If you go in, in any hospital and you go in a surgical field, the first thing you will see on the wall is the clock. Why? Because when you do general surgery, you have to take care of the time. And we need to do the same thing in our surgery. When we, re we open a flap, when we elevate the periosteum, the bone is not breathing. So we have to be very, very fast in our surgery. Not to go to the bar and drink coffee, because it's very important for the patient. So it will be very easy. If the system is easy, we prepare, we put implant, we put abutment, we will go deeper because of the connection and because it's post-extractive, and, and that's it. We can also skip for a mother of mine, so here is the abutment. And of course, for example, with high ML, the, the opportunity to have 12 position is great because for sure you'll be able to put the implant in the right parallelism. And then you can put the temporary. Give me a second I have to skip the presentation. So 
let's go now to the last topic of today, and I, I keep all, all the fireworks for, for tomorrow. But I want to talk to you today about full arch. This case is not of mine, otherwise I wouldn't show. <laughs> and this is amazing, because here there is all the history of implantology. There is superiostrum implant, blade implant, Tramonti implant, Moldani implant, Shalom needles, everything is there. Everything is broken. This is a, a crazy doctor because something broken and put something more and so. But I want you to think something. If the ceramic are good and the patient can bite, this patient is happy. So please, as I told you yesterday, we don't have to think as dentists. The patient doesn't care about the implant connection, uh, surface, they, they want teeth. So we have to go in that direction, of course, working well, not like that. But we have always to keep in our mind that if you want to have a successful dentist, we have to, to intercept the desire of our patient. And let's talk now about full arch. And I will talk, I will start talking about two very old cases. Why? Because when I started to do immediate loading, I went in the Congress, and, and at that time, it wasn't good to do immediate loading. And they always asked me, doctor, but which is your follow-up? I was very young. I say, two years, three years. And they start to do like that with the head. So, like, you won't work. At the end, it didn't happen, but I want to start with a very old case for these reasons. So here is a 53 years old female, it's an EV smoker, we spoke yesterday about smoking, with a positive am anamnesis in the family for tongue cancer, the sister, and opus upper arch. So here was the situation, and we are talking uh, more than 20 years ago, and in fact, look, look for the young, how was the past? We didn't have a computer or something like that. We take a paper, transparent paper, and we draw the implant that we have to place. It was, was quite nice. Too. And what I did here were the extraction. And what I did here, what I did uh, So, uh, what I did in the past, uh, but to be honest, uh, maybe we should reconsider today, is to leave one or two residual root. Do you know why? Proprioception. I will tell you one thing. An implant don't give proprioception to the patient. What does it mean? If you do a bridge work, a full arch, and you try with a paper. How do you feel? Perfect. You check, and it's touching maybe only half arch. You grind, you leave only the canine. How do you feel? Even better. So implant, at least for the first two or three years, maybe after some years it happens, doesn't give any proprioception. So the reasons for leaving some residual root is to maintain proprioception. And when I did this in the past, I've never had a broken ceramic. Nowadays, I would probably extract this too, and sometimes the, the ceramic broken. So here is the patient, and of course, for the residual, I do a primary crown with permanent cement, and then everything can be done with a, a temporary one. So here is eight years post-op. Here is 15 years post-op. It's quite good after 15 years. And here is 19 years post-op. Now we, I, I don't have the, I have a, another one, should be around 23, is almost the same. So the follow-up is not so short. What, what is, is in, extremely important, but we will see this tomorrow case by case position by position. When you do extraction and implant, please remember 
that the position we have to put the implant is not the position where the root stay. Some years ago, there was a company that had a brilliant idea. They told, send me the CT scan of the patient and I will send you an exact replica, exact copy of the root of the patient in titanium. You do the extraction and you put it in. It looks clever, but the reality, it didn't work. Why it didn't work? Because this bone is sufficient for the root, and now you know why. It's sufficient for the root because there is the PDL, and in PDL I do have the BMP. So the root can keep that bone. The implant can't. So at the end, the position in which you have to pull your implant is not this one. This is not correct. You will lose the buccal bone. This is the, the one. So you have to be always in any place of the mouth lingual. Always. Tomorrow I will show you for any area the right position. But it will be always, always lingual, palatal. Which is the problem, that when you do the extraction, it's very easy. With a piezo, it's not a problem to go there. But with a drill, what can happen, you start to work like here. You press, and you skip here. No good. So what we have to do is to go very, in a very parallel direction with a first drill, or sometimes a trick is to use a Lindemann bar with high speed. You go very parallel. You start to go in, and then you change the inclination, and you go in that, in that direction, and do the final, the final preparation. That's the only way to do in the right way. On the other hand, if you do a structure, you could also do a structure and just place implant, but it's not good. So this is the, the bone, as I told you before, after you use the piezo. So here is with the piezo, and there is with the drill. There is a huge difference. Here I have a porous surface, and this porous surface lead to early healing phenomena. Here is the, the literature. We have the presence of nucleated osteocytes on the osteotomy surface. Let's go back for a moment. What I tell you yesterday, the first component that you really need for healing, which is, do you remember? The very first component. It's a fibrin. So for the fibrin, it's much more easier to go there and stick than to go there and stick. The idea is like in, uh, in normal dentistry. If we have to do a reconstruction, what do we do? We do the aging agent to create a porous surface for the bonding. Here is the same story. Here is a porous surface for the fibrin. And I also have live cells, live osteocytes on the, on the, on the surface. So I have an immediate fibrin link, less necrotic material, that, that means a reduction of logosy and early bone recovery. Another situation in which piso is very, very important is if I'm working very close to the nerve. This is the first area you have to respect in oral surgery. If you go a little bit deeper, you know, you do like spaghetti with the nerve. So with the piso is another story. It's much safer also in this situation. Let's see another full arch from the past, and then I will show you the new one from the past for the, for the follow-up, of course. So, at that time, it was a, she was a 70 years old female with antiplatelet therapy with an impacted canine and Braxer. And she had a lot of, uh, of uh, prothesis, one in the mouth and a lot in the back, and came in my office and say, hey doctor, you know, this is bad. And this one from the back was made from him. Mm, no, no, it, even worse. And this other one made from the other doctor, mm, very, very bad. So in that case, if you are a clever doctor, 
say, I'm orthodontist. I'm sorry, madam, I can't help you. But at that time, I was stupid and say, no problem. I will solve for you the problem. I will do the best one for you. I didn't. But now she know my ring and every day, eh, doctor, it's not working. So after a little bit, I was crazy. I say, okay, let's do like that. Extraction of impacted canine. Crazy. Seven, 73 year old, you are taking, I don't know, a, a tree from the bone. And I wait for healing. I didn't use grow factor at the time. Still old style with a, with a transparent paper horn and all the uh, everything. And what I, I did here, it was a walk up, a whole style surgical um, stent. And I didn't use any drill. Because as I told you before, if I want to improve the primary stability, if I want to try and change a little bit the quality of bone, I can use piezo. So I used this old insert of piezo. Now there are new modern one. That one were not for implant insertion. I used the punch to cut the gum in the position, and I put all that implant. I jumped this one because it was very, very poor bone. And once again, immediate loading. And what is crazy is that uh, it immediately stopped braxing. And here is the patient, uh, I think, one year later or something like that. And then five years, and then 70 years. Now she's still alive, and the, 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 bridge, work, the bridge work is there. Once again, of course, there is a compromise. There is some pink ceramic there, but it doesn't matter. We are not talking about a 20 years old boy or girl. We are talking about a 73 years old madam. So I, I, it would be crazy for me to do a graft here. I put some pink ceramic. So once again, please, you have to relate your therapy to the patient desire, to the patient age to the patient aesthetic needs, to the patient money. There is only one diagnosis, and there are a lot of therapy we can do in our patient. As I told you yesterday, full arch rehabilitation is the easiest thing you can do if you, if you follow my trick. If we want to do one implant, maybe any of this implant is perfect, it's good. I'm also fascinated about this one from, it come from, uh, I don't know from where, it's a, you know, I don't know in English the term, but it's a, it's a crazy implant. Anyway, and it doesn't matter because you can, you take your time, you have a, a, a hard kit with a lot of or drill, a lot of component, it doesn't matter, you are placing one implant. You know, when I do one implant, I ask my secretary, to take one hour for the patient. Do I need one hour? No, at all. I do an aesthetic and I start talking. How, how is your little boy? I, okay, now we have to wait five minutes for an aesthetic. I go to the computer. Uh, and then, uh, do, do you feel a little bit now? Okay, let's wait another bit. Let's take some x-ray. Why? Because the patient is coming in our office. If I place the implant in five minutes and I say to my patient, okay, give me 1,000 euro. You say, doctor, you are crazy. So that's why. And it's perfect. But if I do a full arch, I take one hour and 15 minutes. And that, that is the maximum in local anesthesia in Europe. Let's say if you are a good teller, you, you can reach one hour and 30. That's it. After one hour and 30, the patient gets crazy, start to stand up and go away. So. In a case like that, you really need a very easy system. To drill implant, once again, not to go to the bar and drink tea or coffee, but because your timing is that one, is one hour and 30. That's important for the patient management, that's important for biology, because during that one hour and 30, the bone is almost no breathing. So what I do is quite easy. I prepare a temporary like that. Like, you know, when you do a, a normal crown preparation. So it's completely open. Of course, I already know occlusion and, and everything. 
Then the patient come in the office, I place the implant, I place my abutment, and I reline the temporary. That's it. And here is already the face, I'm sorry I jumped one in the presentation. Okay, maybe it's in the wrong order. So this is, this is the temporary. And I just reline it and say to the patient, okay, you can go home. Don't bite hard thing for one month and see you in a few days to recontrol the, the occlusion. Then I wait for six months in the upper and three months in the lower. Then I go back to Brandenburg school. But the patient is with a temporary, with a fixed temporary, is not in a hurry to, to finish and, and to conclude the, the, the bridge work. Let's go to the modern one. Another trick, I won't, I won't tell you another trick, we still have time. What I do in my practice, it was teaching to me from, in the US from George Romanos, he's a, a, a very good doctor, a very good friend, but he's also a very, very good manager, market man. I do a flat therapy. What does it mean? The patient come in my office and ask me, doctor, how much does it cost? And I say, let's say 10,000 euro for the, for the upper. And the patient asks me, how many implants will you place? And I say, don't worry, I will do for you the best work I can do. I will put all your implant you need, and that's the price, that's it. I never, never write down 10 implant, 4 implant, 2 implant, and I will tell you why. For two reasons. First reasons, that patient go to the coiffeur, and start to talk or go somewhere and start to talk and say, oh, I went to Dr. Palermo and the, the price was 10,000 because the patient talk and they ask for the price. When that other patient come in my office, I have two information, one information. I know that maybe that patient can afford that, that therapy, have enough money to afford, that's an important information for me. And the information I gave to the patient when he asked me, which is the price, 10,000? She thought, oh, wow, she's a very good man. She is asking me the, exactly the same price. So if I start to change the price for 1.7, for 1.9, for 1.6, the patient gets crazy, and they start to think that you are doing the price in relation to the patient and not to the therapy. The, the last point, if I lose one implant, and it happens. Never the patient asks me, please take it out from, from the bill, because the bill is not related to the implant. On the other end, and Omar will be very happy for this, what I do, I really put as much implant as I can. Why? My success rate in full arch rehabilitation is 100%. The question could be, what does it mean that you have never lost an implant? No, I've lost a lot of implant. But it's not a problem, because I will show you how to manage in a way that even if you lose an implant, it doesn't change. Let's see some cases. Look here, this is a hard case. Look at occlusion. That one are the lower. So what we have to do here, of course, we have to know in advance the occlusion, not the day of the surgery, or sometimes with the removable too. And then we start with the surgery. And here I use alveolus. I don't open the flap. There I'm opening the flap. I'm using, I was telling you before, universe implant with a platform shifting and conical connection. So I will go deeper and deeper. Don't do it with a, a flat connection. And here is, is the patient. And here is the patient. So it's one, two, three, four, six, Uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque, sei, seven implants. So it's a hole on seven. 
But if I do this, I'm safe. I have no risk at all. So I'm paying to the company to implant, free implant more. But in a general and very expensive therapy, this doesn't make a big, big difference. But the difference for me is that if, you lose, if I lose one implant, it doesn't matter. If, you lose, if I lose almost 50%, I'll do around four at the end. That makes a big, big difference. So, well, let's see another case and then I will tell you another trick. So here is the situation. You can see very, especially on, on the right there, very poor bone. I, I, and in this case, let's go back to the topic of tomorrow, flap or non-flap. I have to open the flap, a gentle flap, but I have to open because I don't have enough bone not to open. So, and once again, the healing when you open and when you don't open is another biological mechanism of healing. It would take maybe one day to, to see the difference in between. So, what I do here and what I do always when you do, I'm using of course a, a surgical guide to have some information, but it will be free hand. And I always start from the central. So you have to start from the central and go back. Don't do the mistake to start from the molar and go mesial, because maybe the central incisor will be in the middle. So you have to focus on aesthetic. So you start from the central. I often do central, then I jump lateral, canine, and then I go, and I go back. And look, what is important is to have a system like universe. Two drill, whoosh, 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 implant, that's it. Because remember, one hour and a half is your limit, is your maximum. Or on the other end, you can do sedation. You can stay free day. But you still have the problem of the, of, of the lack of oxygen for the bone. So I told you I prefer to screw it with the end. I know that is maybe it's less elegant, but give me a full control. The other trick I already told you, I leave the insertion tool and I put in relation the head of the mi micromotor with the head of the insertion tool. So after I see the first implant is in a good position, the second one will be much more easier for me to go and put in the right place. And again, to drill an implant. So we need uh, more two or three insertion tool, of course, to do, to do this. After, you can also put the abutment. You don't need to have eight insertion, insertion tool. You can put time by time the abutment. Another thing, uh, you, you always see my, in my clip uh, that I move my head, because you see my head on, on the camera. That's very important, because when we place implant, we, have, we need at least two point of view. If you look only with a point of view, maybe you finish your surgery, you see x-ray, and all implants are like that, are sleeping. So it's a tridimensional position of the implant, so you, you need, like in the, in the crown preparation, at least two point of view, so you have to move your head. The second point, very important, during the surgery, you have to ask your patient, please close, this is important for the patient because it re relaxes the muscle. But this is also very important for you because when the patient close, you are visualizing and you are rethinking to the right occlusion of the patient. Because the ideal is to use your idea of to, to use straight implant, straight abutment, sorry. If you use 15 degrees, is okay. 25 is better 
it's better not you can use of course but the, the idea is to use straight so we can screw it And, and again, you, you put the, the abutment, but you are, the, the, the hardest part is, da, is done because the aesthetic part is, a, is, a, um, is done. We can jump a little bit, it doesn't matter to see, to see the, the other point of view. Of course, in uh, in the posterior area, sometimes can be difficult to to use the uh, the, the other instruments. So you use rackets to be more comfortable, also for for the patient. And we go on the other side, and it will be the same. Noth nothing really changed. But once again, the great great thing is two drill with a conical kit and an implant. So you're at the other implant and look, I, I do have the abutment there, I, I insertion tool, so I have all the, the reference to, to put the implant in, in the right spatial position. And I put this, and I think Malo now is crying because I'm putting an implant so so back. But it make a huge, huge difference. So once again, the implant can be at the level or deeper in the bone because of the connection of universal implant. And let's go now to X-ray, eight implant. So, I put the abutment, I put the temporary, I check the occlusion. Once again, how can you do here a non-functional? It's impossible. It's, function, it's always functional. So, I put the abutment, uh, I reline everything, I check the occlusion, and I ask the patient to, to come any one month for a check. Do I need? No, it's just to take money. Because I can do nothing. I checked occlusion a little bit, that's it. Because what I do here is to use a strong cement. I don't put 10 bond. I put a strong cement, like Harvard, to give you an idea. Because it's a splint I'm going, I'm going to do. After six months in the hopper, the patient comes in my office. I say, okay, we'll be the last control. I take the hammer, tuck, 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 and I take everything out. Maybe. I don't know, maybe this implant is moving. What I do, I don't need an aesthetic. With my end, I screw down. Here, I go in the sink, I put it out, and I re-cement the temporary. That's it. And I say to a patient, okay, in 15 days, we will do the final impression. That's patient management. Because at the end, I'm doing the work. Uh, maybe I will have a, a, an extension there. It doesn't happen. But nothing happened. As I didn't, as I told you before, I didn't do a patient a price per implant. I did a, a patient, a, a, a flat therapy. So this is the price for the upper or for the lower rehabilitation. Of course, the temporary have to be quite aesthetic in the buccal aspect, but have to be very, very bad inside because it's all resin. Have to be very big to 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 keep everything in position and not to break. At the end here, it was possible to keep all implant, but here I I don't risk. I can't risk. If, even if I lose two implant, three implant, 
I still can finish my bridge work. And for me, this makes a big, big difference. Because if I, I do a all on four for a patient and I lose one implant, I do a, a removable. No option. No option. Let's see one of the last cases where I use also, as I introduce you, the one piece implant. I know here in Syria still you don't have the power implant from IML, that is a one piece implant. But it's a very interesting implant because, uh, as I explained to you about the connection, here we don't have connection, we don't have pumping effect, we, we don't lose bone where we put it stay. That's very interesting. Second point, it's very cheap. So maybe a patient can't afford a standard therapy with standard implant, with eye level implant, and you can have a good quality implant with a lower price. And this is the story of this patient, because this patient was a patient of mine, and he did in the past this work. Six implant, and uh, everything was good, but then he lost his job. So he had no money, and he couldn't do, he couldn't do the surgery, he couldn't afford the, the, the therapy. So I was sad for him, and, and I said, Let, let's do like that. I will do a course in my office, and uh, I will do live surgery, if you want to be the patient, I will, I will do the surgery, but there will be other doctor looking, there will be the camera, we will do for free. And he said, okay, good, let's do it. And this is the surgery, and look how easy can be the surgery. Here, if you remember the x-ray, I didn't put the, the, the three-dimensional, I do have a lot, a lot of bone. I don't need here to open the flap. Because if I go in the middle, I'm sure I'm in the bone. In the past, someone said, hey, doctor, keep attention. Because if you do this, there is the invagination of the epithelial cells. This is not true at all. I'm working with growth factor now since 10 years. So I know a lot about cellular biology. And if you take a, a epithelial cell and you put in the bone, in a very short time, the macrophages came and eat, that's it. So you can put whatever kind of cell you want in bone, you wa it won't survive. Bone is not a grand culture for any kind of cellular line. So once again, I use the same surgical cassette, the same surgical kit for, for universe and for um, power. And that's also very interesting. And as I told you before, please close, because you are visualizing the position, the right position. And here is extremely important, because it's one piece. So I can grind it, but at the end, the position is that one. So it's exactly the same story like before. The difference here is that the abutment is already there is integrated with the implant. What you see here are the punch of the point where I'm going to put all the implant. And once again, please close. And once again, I put in relation the head of the, uh, the micro motor with the, the implant. Let, let's see, maybe another two implant and then we stop because it's always the same story. So the, the first drill, the final conical drill, and then the implant, self-tapping, self-drilling, and this allow me also to change the position during the insertion, both with power and with universe, with universe implant.
So uh, I want to, we, we can skip, but I want to show you something. This movie is without any cut. It takes the full surgery 15 minutes. One, five. If I have to do, I don't know, a, a root canal, I, I'm not good in root canal, it takes one hour to me for a premolar. A and it's better if I don't do because I'm very bad. But to give you an idea, I, I'm, not, I'm not a fast man, is that if the system is easy and you do the, you, the right surgery, everything will be very easy. Maybe not 15 minutes the first time, maybe one hour, but it's the time of a good tooth cleaning. What is very important for the young doctor, remember, when you do a surgery, all the surgery have to be in your mind before doing it. So you have to see model, you have to see x-ray, you have to see CT scan first. All the surgery is in your, in your mind, then you go in the surgical theater and you check your box. So first drill, second drill, insertion tool, racket, and every, everything has to be there. Ah, I forgot the have to be there. Don't ask the nurse, say, please take me, everything has to be there. Then all the surgery is in your mind, and then you have just to do. To give a, a, an idea, it's like the, the pilot from Formula One. So they are the best 20 pilots in the world, but they, before doing the race, they do on simulator several and several times. At the time of the race, they go in the car, and just repeat what it is in the mind. And the surgery is the same thing. You have to do the same. Don't do the surgery while doing. Do it before without the mouth of the patient. If you do this, this can be the timing, 40 minutes and 38 seconds for, for everything. So we can skip, so we can have also time for questions. And once again, the buckle can be good, not very good, otherwise they go away with the, with the temporary. But here, have to be very bad, because have to be very big to resist to the stress. And here is the X-ray. They are in a good position. And the difficulty here, of course, is rela in relation to the parallelism. But at the end, the patient that couldn't afford, that e didn't have money, for the therapy, it was possible for him to have a, a, fixed, a fixed bridge work, fixed bridge work anyway. And once again, if I lose one, doesn't matter. Look here, you, you could say, why, why did you put, this is the Malo technique, look here, the mental nerve, visualization, I go in that direction. So what, what I need, to keep the bone because as I told you since yesterday, bone is bone because it's under load. When bone is not under load, disappear. So it is not good. So the, the, the all on four technique, the original all on four technique was something great, but the, the, the patient were very old patient with severe bone atrophy. If you look, the first publication of Malo about Olon 4 was old patient with severe atrophy. So I agree, I still do it, I still do it, but in that kind of patient. If I have a young patient with a, with a lot of bone, we really need to keep the bone. So please pull one implant more, that, that, that is better. So it was possible today to, um, to have some more concepts. And tomorrow I will give you even some more and I will tell you something really, really new. As I told you, it's a project that it, it took four years to be developed. It's a European research in collaboration with IML and we developed the first biological surface of the story for the implant. And for the first time, and we, we do have five impacted publications at the moment about this, and for the first time, we obtained a bilateral healing of the bone. So from the bone 
to the implant and from the implant to the bone. And tomorrow, we will talk also about the complication. Because as I told you yesterday, if you work, you will always have a complication. The point is how to manage it. So I will show you the complication. I will show you broken implant. I will show you lack of bone. I will show a, a lot of complication. But above all, I will show you how to manage this complication. So let's say in perfect time, I finish my presentation and hope to see you here tomorrow. Thank you very much. We thank Professor Andrea Balermo for his lecture and for sharing his experience with us.